it's great that we have a, a moratorium on GM crops in South Australia, uh, but I would note that the CSIRO just off South Road at O'Halloran Hill is testing a variety of GM wheat, some 150 metres from South Australia's main transport corridor. So I'm not aware of the history, but why didn't the moratorium cover the, the testing of GM crops? And uh, why in a state where we can't grow a GM crop can we test a GM crop? The licensing of trials is left to the Office of Gene Technology Regulator, a federal body, and the states have agreed that they won't oppose field trials. However, some of Bayer's growing in South Australia is um, bigger than that, and the uh, seed that's produced is actually exported because it's pure seed uh, to North America for further bulking up for commercial purposes. That's allowed by the state law, but it requires an exemption by the state agriculture minister. So it's really the way that the parliamentarians have designed the system to allow for exemptions, and this state government has chosen to allow exemptions for those activities. Don't you think that we need something that's more comprehensive and helps all the people who can't necessarily afford to have uh, buy organic food, can't necessarily afford to, afford to buy more expensive uh, speciality products, and uh, especially people in other countries if we're exporting this technology uh, don't you think we need something more comprehensive um, rather than relying on people to just spend uh, extra money uh, not to have to eat dangerously unhealthy food? Food labelling is important because it gives consumers uh, a choice. It raises it as an issue because that way uh, it engenders public debate. We need to do the sort of stuff that Mark's been talking about in terms of litigation so that farmers are protected who want to stay GM free. There's literally hundreds of questions we could ask of Fazans that I can put a notice in the Senate uh, and through the Senate estimates process for Fazans to answer questions about the rigour of their process in terms of uh, food safety issues. Yes, I'm a GP in Adelaide with an interest in healthy food in available to the public. Um, if we can't even find out what countries imported products are coming from, for example, I rang the sanitarium and emailed them about Up and Go and Uncle Toby's healthy muesli bars in my son's lunchbox. I was told I can't even find out what countries the imported products come from. If we can't even find that out, how can we find out if there's um, GP? GM modified um, in the imported products? The labelling laws as they are at the moment are if a food that's come from a GM crop has actually been refined into an oil, for example, then it doesn't have to be labelled. Um, if you feed an animal GM feed, then the products from that animal also don't have to be labelled. So the meat and the milk and the eggs and the stuff don't have to be labelled that comes from it. The labelling laws just need to be upheld the way that they're meant to be in order for these things to be labelled. And in places like um, Europe, uh, things like oils do need to be labelled. Manufacturers are able to get away with almost anything if there's no policing of the labelling laws. How do you decontaminate after GM? Has anyone really tried to do that? And how successful has it been? Uh, when my paddock uh, was contaminated with half a percent of GM canola, I was able to spray it the next year uh, with a 2,4-D, which took out any seed that was growing. But you can have volunteer GM canola coming up at least six years. In Tasmania, they had it 10 years coming up. One of the biggest marketing of rolled oats is Blue Lake Milling at Bordertown. They don't want to buy anything that's got canola or GM canola in it because they are frightened that something will come back in the future and affect their marketing and they'll get sued. They have a premium product that they sell all around the world and they don't want it contaminated. What do you need from us? Like, is there anything we can do to help you promote this issue like, to our MPs or you know, what can we do? I think what we need to do, we need to have a plan of action in terms of some positive changes to the law. We need to chip away at this food labelling, strict liability, um, further testing of Fazans, and we need to do all that in concert. And we also need to know as consumers, we have a right to know and the precautionary principle. Madge met with Coles last year and they said, we know it's an issue for some people, but until more people tell us that, we're not going to do anything. When you make, um, raise concerns about products directly to the manufacturers, uh, you get emails back immediately. Um, defensive or thank you, we didn't know that will change it. It is extraordinary how sensitive.
manufacturers are to, um, to those sorts of products. So don't go to the supermarkets, go to the manufacturers, because they're the ones that, are, that have to fight for their supermarket space. Uh, the supermarkets will find another supplier. Mm -hmm. It's the manufacturers that are protecting their businesses. We're thinking about having a rally in Canberra called Fed Up with Fizants. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so you are all warmly welcome to come. And um, we thought if you can't come, then we'll suggest who to ring to say we actually want our food labelled. What is your evidence that GM foods are harmful? My first point is the issue of um, food labelling. We can agree on that. The second issue is that if you as a farmer get a market premium for a non-GM crop, you should be able to maintain that premium. And if your crop is contaminated, there are issues there of liability that need to be dealt with. So you agree with that? OK, good. OK, so... Um, so this is two, they're, they're, they're two big reforms. So I'm glad, you know, they're, they're two big reforms that we need to look at. The third issue is that I think that Fazans, as a regulator, needs to do more in relation to this. The company that makes the grain has a patent on it, which means that if I, as a researcher, want to go and buy some of that grain from a, a grain producer, um, I can't do it. They won't let me do it. There's a clause in there that says when you buy this from this seed uh, releaser, this uh, seed merchant, you're not allowed to do any research on it. You're not allowed to give it to anyone else to do research on either. So there's a great problem in actual independent people trying to get hold of the materials to do independent testing. The documents that go into our food regulator that are supposed to show that the stuff is safe to eat quite often actually show adverse effects. As far as I'm concerned, the burden of proof should be on the, the proponent of the technology. The company's promoting the technology to prove it's safe, not up to the population at large to prove that it's harmful. What is the degree of irreversibility of the presence of genetically organised organisms in the environment? As Geoffrey said, there's uh, genetically engineered canola out there that's going to be a bit difficult to get rid of, but I think it still is possible to keep a lid on it. Uh, the worry is if we continue to, to go down that path, it's going to be difficult, but I don't think it's too late at this point. Seeing as the majority of Australians appear to not want anything to do with GM crops, GM food, um, and the federal government is just ignoring that, how much pressure are they under from the World Trade Organisation and the American Free Trade Agreement to facilitate the rollout of GM into Australia and not to properly label food. Food Standards Australia New Zealand, who's our food regulator, is, uh, assesses human food safety, but it also has other roles. It needs to promote fair trade. It needs to promote trade and commerce and consistency between domestic and international concerns. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, so-called, uh, which is going on at the moment, and the representations to the American government made by the biotech industry organisation to dismantle our regulatory system, our labelling and, and everything else.